so it's interesting while you're, while you're talking about this whole religion thing, while you're in, who has reached out to want to support? We talked about this last time briefly. Yeah. Uh, uh, being a Muslim yourself, have some of the most powerful Muslims reached out, trying to help out, figuring out a way to get you out? Yeah, absolutely. They certainly have. And also the amount of mail I got from Muslims around the world was completely incredible. When I was in the cell with Tristan, he even said, he said, well, I'm Christian. Nobody's written to me. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of amazing the support we, that you have from the, the brotherhood and you certainly feel part of the family. And I've had a lot of support from them as a whole. Um, it was Ramadan at the time I was in jail. So my first Ramadan was in jail. So that was certainly interesting because you eat when the sun goes down. And my meal came when the sun was up. So I'd have to cover it up and try and hide it from cockroaches and wait for the sun to go down and then eat it cold by myself. But I felt like, you know, if you're going to do it the first time, you may as well jump in the deep end and do it hard. So I, I did that and that was an experience. And jail as a whole, I mean, there's so many stories I can tell. There's so many different ways I, I remember it. There were times I laughed. I will sit and say some of the best days of my life were in jail. Get out of here. Yeah. And some of the worst days of my life were in jail. But there were days where me and Tristan, when we were finally in the same cell, there's times we laughed like we've never laughed before. Um, I'll sit and, and, and admit that's absolutely not really true. I feel like if you're going to be the kind of person who strives for an exceptional life, which is what I am, I think I'd be a coward if I said I want an exceptional life, but I only want it to be exceptional in a good way. I don't think that's genuine. I want an exceptional life. And exceptional means away from the norm. And away from the norm means flying your Bugatti on a jet to Dubai and taking your own plane to meet it there. And it also means a Romanian dungeon <laughs> with cockroaches on New Year's Eve. They're both exceptional experiences. And the times I was with my brother and it was just him and I, we truly had some genuine days where we laughed like we always laugh. Me and him laugh and have fun on a private jet and we laughed and had fun in a Romanian prison cell because that's just who we are. And I also have to give my brother some credit while we're here. I would like to state that I absolutely genuinely believe I have the best brother in the world. And I'll tell you why. I always knew I had the best brother in the world, but he proved it in jail. And I'll tell you why. My brother was put in jail for being my brother. He hasn't said any videos. He hasn't said anything on the internet. He hasn't said any of the things I've supposedly said. He's never, the Matrix isn't attacking him. The BBC doesn't print about him, nothing. Why was Tristan Tate in jail? Because it's Tate brothers. So they just took him and threw him in a cell. Now what's interesting is, when I got out of jail, so many people near me got heat. All business partners got heat with the tax. They got hit with like tax paperwork and uh, they were calling everyone who's ever known me and ex-girlfriends got heat and all these people got heat. And some people complained, some people didn't. But some people were like, oh, since you've been in jail, it's been so stressful for me. The media's outside my house. It's stressful for you. I was in jail. What do you want me to do? And people were complaining at me. And as these people started to complain, I sat there, I said to Tristan, you got thrown in jail purely for being my brother. And never for a fraction of a second did you even moan. Didn't even, not even for a fraction of a second did he say, oh, they only put me here because of you. Why am I here? I, I'm innocent. This has nothing to do with me. Nothing. In fact, he said the absolute opposite. He said, I am so glad I went to jail with you. Hmm. I would be furious if they sent you here by yourself. If they're going to lock you up, they better lock me up. And there was a time, about two months in, because there's less media pressure on Tristan, they were talking about releasing Tristan first. And he was saying, no, I won't leave without Andrew. Going down with the ship. I won't leave unless my brother leaves. Wow. I won't leave. And he was telling the guards, I won't leave. Keep me here. I'm not leaving. And they said, the judge says you have to leave, you have to leave. He goes, then I'll stand outside the gate. I'll sleep outside. I ain't leaving this jail. And our lawyer said, well, we can make an appeal to just release you because there's less media scrutiny around you. And Tristan's like, no, Andrew's in jail, I'm in jail refused to leave. He was adamant he had to stay. That's a brother for me. And it was the same for me. I said to Tristan, if they came into me and said, Andrew, go home, I'd be like, no, no way. If Tristan's in jail, I'm in jail. We're in jail together. He never for a second complained, never bitched, never moaned. And he was only in jail for being my brother. And then I come out and there's other people, oh, they sent me a piece of paper, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're moaning? It's unbelievable. You truly learn, like I said, jail confirms everything you already knew about the world. And you truly learn who's on your side and who isn't. And that's good to learn, but it's, it's actually crazy. The, also, the, the larger psychological analysis of it all, everyone lives inside their own minds, right? So it's, it's kind of crazy. I came out of jail, and the, some of the first messages I got from people was them complaining about the problems me being in jail had given. Like, you think that wouldn't happen, right? You think, oh, you come out of jail, people would be like, oh, are you okay? They're like, oh, you're okay? You're out now? Okay, yeah, well, listen. Mo, 
You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. And I'm like, I was in jail. What do you want me to do? Yeah, that sounds unfortunate. I was in your jail cell. What do you want me to do about it? It's kind of crazy how much everyone's kind of self-interested. So it's been a, a learning curve and you learn a lot about a lot of different people and your circle gets smaller. And uh, I think that's probably one of the reasons God put me in there to just learn a lot and, and make my circle smaller. And you just have to listen to him and pay attention to it and say, okay, right, you're off, you're off, you're off, you're on, you're on, you're on. But my brother, I have to give him credit because I tell you, I also think me and Tristan are one of the best teams in the world because we have different roles inside of our brotherhood. My role is to be concerned and to panic. Not panic, that's the wrong word, I never panic. My role is to be concerned and try and fix the problem. I'm in jail, pacing up and down. How do we get out? And Tristan's role is to not care. And together, that helps us achieve the objective best because when we really need to get out, I'm in charge. <laughs> his, role, his role is to not care. Sometimes, when it, was, when it was at the height of frustration, I needed his superpower. Tristan's superpower, and this is his superpower for life, is he is the master of not giving a fuck. We would go to court. We would go to court. Imagine this, you're in jail, right? Weekends were the worst because the TV was worse on weekends for some reason. Like you had, you had like three channels and the TV, the weekends were the worst and you could hear out the window everyone having fun. I hated weekends. So on a Friday would roll around, I'd say, okay, Tristan, we just have to zen away the weekend. And on Monday there's court. We just have to zen away the weekend. So for the weekend, we just sit there staring at the wall. Intrusive thoughts, can't sleep, all those things you're trying to get out your brain, just sitting in silence because the room's tapped, just staring at the wall, just staring at the wall. And you think Monday would never come. And Monday would eventually come, right? Or Sunday night comes, and 8 a.m. on Monday, they're gonna take you to court, and they might let you go home. They might let you go home, you've done nothing. This person in this room can decide if you go home. And it's Sunday night and you can't sleep and you're awake all night long. There's no clock, but you just, you just the seconds feel like hours. You're just sitting there. Eventually, 8 a.m. comes, put you in handcuffs, walk you to the court, you walk in there, everyone speaks Romanian, don't have a clue what's going on, everyone's just talking at each other in Romanian, then they say, you'll get the answer in three hours, go back to jail. When I went back to jail, I was sitting in the room. I was like, do I pack to go home? No, that's too optimistic, okay. But you're nervous, you're like, you're anxious. Am I gonna go home? Is it over? Do I get to go home? I called the lawyer, do you have an answer yet? No, no answer yet, okay. Sitting there, I can barely sit still. Tristan finishes court, walks straight into the room. It's a matrix attack, it's bullshit, I'm going to sleep. And went to bed, <laughs> clean asleep. I was like, how the fuck are you asleep? He didn't care at all. He just went straight to bed. And then when he woke up like six hours later, matrix attack, I'm like, yeah, he goes, thought so. He just rolled back over, didn't care. But it's perfect for a guy like you. But that's what you need, I need that. I agree. Because if I had someone else next to me as hyped as me, I would have gone insane. I agree. I need someone like yeah. him who's just like, he had the superpowers like, bro, I love jail. Jail's great, look, we got coffee. I love jail. None of my women are messaging me, I love jail. Truth, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I had 45 minutes on the phone a day and I used all of my minutes. Tristan never made a single phone call from jail. Get out of here. Not one. I was like, Tristan, do you want to speak to anyone? Nah. Sit there watching Romanian news. Didn't give a shit. <laughs> like bulletproof. But the only reason he's so bulletproof that way is because he knows I'm doing the absolute best the other way. He couldn't be that way if I wasn't trying to get us out because then he would try to get out. You, like need, yin you, yin need, you need the yin and yang. So like when, I, when, we, when, I, when it was chill time, it was his mental frame. And when it was, how do we get out of here? It was yeah. my mental frame. But Tristan's superpower genuinely is genuinely not, genuinely not caring. I can't explain the level of how much he didn't, it didn't affect him. He didn't bother him at all. I didn't see him sad, nothing, he was smiling. He didn't care. You consider yourself a stoic. How much more stoic is he than you? I just think we have different roles and I think we've evolved into them over the time because it's not just jails so with everything. That's what we are with everything. If, if there's a business problem, I'm the one who's like, shit, we have to fix this now, shit, shit. And Tristan's the one like, Andrew, you are so ridiculously rich, chill. But we need that. We need both, right? But he couldn't be that chilled if I wasn't the way I was because he wouldn't be successful. So totally. so you, need, you need the opposites. Yeah. So everyone goes, oh, you and your brother are so close. We're so close because we're actually very different people. But yeah, he, it, he was amazing in jail. And even afterwards, I, I still struggle to sleep. He sleeps fine. Because I think my experience of jail was a far more stressful one. Because I, but I adopted that. Now I'm not saying I couldn't have done what Tristan did. I could have done what Tristan did. If I were to go into jail and say your MO is to not care, I could not care. But my MO was how do I get